Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2024 Bowman Baseball. Eight box jumbo, pick your team, number nine, our last jumbo case in the store. Thanks everyone for helping us sell out all of our Bowman jumbo. We may get some more in the future, but I don't know. If the price has gone up on us, it might be a different price point. So thanks everyone for locking your prices here. Sorry, I forgot to change my camera focus from the previous break. Set that focus right around there, should be pretty good. All right, so big thanks everybody here on a Chew Tuesday for on May 14th. Pick your team nine, thanks everyone for getting in. Barry with Last Spot Mojo and the A's. And there's everybody right there. And good luck. It's a big jumbo case here. Love the Bowman baseball because of, of all the uh, future possibilities, the prospecting that we can do here. You know, when people talk about like, you know, the the key, the big rookies and all that sort of stuff, you want to find them in stuff like Bowman and Bowman draft. Three autographs a box in the jumbo. And a lot of cards. All card ship. Good luck. Uh, just as a reminder, the sort of key rookies that we're, that we're keying in on, on our uh, sleeve and top load list, are going to be Aiden Miller for the Phillies. Arjun Nimala, Toronto Blue Jays. I think the first uh, Indian American kid to be drafted in the first round, I want to say. Uh, so these are with the Blue Jays, Brock Wilkin, Brewers, Dylan Cruz, Nationals, Ellie De La Cruz. We only have two rookie cards on this list. It's Ellie De La Cruz for the Reds and Yamamoto for the Dodgers. Other prospects, Greg Lombard Jr., Yankees, Kyle Teal, Boston Red Sox, Luis Baez, Houston Astros, Walker Jenkins, Minnesota Twins, and another National, Yandy Morales for the Nats. And again, did I mention all card ship as well? So if there are like some some prospects that you particularly like that's not on our list, don't worry, everything will ship. Here's box number one. We're expecting. Uh, Expecting three autos and uh, some parallels. Hopefully, a lot of parallels. Hopefully, maybe some. It is True Tuesday. Maybe we'll see some. Uh, maybe we'll see some train whistle worthy parallels happening here. Leave those up a little bit later. Ali Dela Cruz. And we got Felix Morabel, twenty three out of one twenty five. For the Halos, that's going to be for Jeff and the Angels. And that blue paisley pattern. And our first autograph is going to be an Astro. That's Herman Ramirez. Bowman first autograph for Houston. That's going to go to Mark and Strohs. Ryan Lasco, green lunar for the A's.
Caitlin Clark has finally scored a bucket. Yellow parallel coming up. And it's a yellow auto. It, it's a Cub. Alfonsin Rosario, 74 out of 75. Yellow auto for Mark and the Cubbies. On the board, Mark. Dylan Cruz. Paul Skeens. I think I heard that the uh, Pirates are going to go to a six-man rotation to accommodate all of their, their young pitchers there. There's Alfredo Duno, 34 out of 125, Lunar. Nice, Mark. Good timing. There's Dylan Cruz, Rising Infernos. All of those are going to go to Matthew and the Nats. Good luck, Matt. Morales as well. There's our first Walker Jenkins. All of those will go to Scott and the Twins. Here's our first Aiden Miller. That's going to be for Rennie in the Phillies. Good luck. Commercial here. Let's flip over to Pacers at Knicks. How is this game starting out here? No, that's a commercial too. Why don't they, why don't they uh, time these things? We've got David Guzman, 291 out of 299. Speckle. For Toronto, that's going to be for Brian. Brian O'Reilly. Out here in the fields, I fight for my meals. All right, there's Luis Baez, paper. That's going to go to Mark N. And the Strohs. We got a Mark L, we got a Mark N. And this one. New Camino, Rising Infernos. Hopefully he'll get called up soon. He might. There's George Lombard Jr. paper for Scott and the Yankees. Oh, there's Chrome Lombard Jr. We've got another autograph coming up. There's a Yamamoto in there too. There we go. Paper Yamamoto, all of those will go to Brian H. And the Dodgers. I'm sure I'm going to miss like some of the guys on our list, but our our uh, excellent sorting and shipping team will also have an eye on that. Ooh, nice. That's Walker Jenkins. Bowman first autograph. Twins. That's going to be for Scott Goodman. Nice. Fifth overall pick. Nice, those are our three autos, nice. Do we have any low numbered parallels we can find here? We got Max Clark to 499. Your third overall pick, Tigers, it's gonna go to Allen. There he is again, he's supposed to be really good too.
Mark L is saying this is my favorite. Just in front of Topps Chrome. Yeah, I, I do love the bow, especially the jumbos. A lot of autographs, a lot of great stuff in here. I do like the, the prospecting angle. There's Arju Namala for Brian and the Blue Jays. Walker Jenkins for the Twins. That's the that's the whole fun of this Bowman stuff is the prospecting. See, you know, it's like fantasy baseball. It's like wh wh which one of these guys are going to be the big names? You know, two, three, four years down the road. James Woods might get the uh, James Wood might get the call up soon. There's Aiden Miller for the Phillies. There's Arjun Nimala, Chrome, Ronald's brother, Brian. And that's a good start. I'm just going to stack those Bowmans up there. You can see everything right there. They're not going anywhere. Box two. I guess I could shut down the poll. Looks like our, our, our voters are, are split. 50-50, I asked who's going to win this Eastern Conference semifinal game. Pacers are in New York. Pacers up 2014 with five minutes left in the first quarter. So just started, but but the uh, our audience is divided. I'm going to create another poll really quick here. Who wins West Semi Game 5 tonight? That's going to be a good one. Timberwolves. Are the Road Dogs plus four and a half? That series is also tied at two. And they're at Nuggets minus four and a half. When you vote, it could be against the spread or it could just be straight up whatever you want to do. But it just gives us a general idea of what our crew is thinking. So vote away. Yeah, totally, Mark. You can definitely go down a farm system rabbit hole. You know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're like, subscribing to fan graphs and baseball america and you're looking at keith law report prospect reports mlb.com prospect pipeline reports you know it's a, it's a whole other world of prospecting but it is like prospecting for gold you know what i mean you know some 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 areas you're going to you're going to get instant return some of them is just going to take a while the players you thought were going to be big won't. The players you didn't think would be big will. You know, so and then you'll be glad that you're like, man, I'm glad I got all this, all this Bowman stuff, right? And it's cheaper too, compared to like when their rookie cards come out. But by the time if they're a hot rookie coming out, then they're going to be looking for these Bowman firsts. That's where that's where the that's where the big money can be. You know, you got to do your due diligence, got to grade those cards, get nice grades, etc. But prospecting can be a lot of fun, like prospecting for gold. Sure, you can you can you can buy a plot of land that's already been developed and producing gold. It's a lot more expensive, though. If you get a fresh plot of land and you start doing your own your own digging and mining and sluicing, you know, the rewards might take a little bit longer, but the rewards could be greater. You know, we're modern day prospectors, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're doing when we're in this Bowman. There's Chandler Pollard, 214 out of 499. It's always funny, we always talk about this every year here in the shop. We've got this big top load list that I've got right over here, and there's a ton of names on here. You know, like every six, months that go by or every year that goes by, that list gets smaller and smaller as we start to see which prospects are, are, are working out and which are not. So by the, time, by the time we do like 2024 Bowman next year, that list might be completely different. Uh, Chandler Pollard's gonna go to Evan and the Rangers. Rangers, another one of those teams that Spend a lot of money on payroll, 
but also have a good farm system as well. So da dangerous combination. Behind Rafa Devers is Brooks Lee to 125. Aqua Shimmer. Twins, that's for Scott. Former top 10 pick. Another Arjun Namala. Got a paper Walker Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. Lombard Jr. We got some numbered paper here. Luke Adams, 221 out of 499 for the Brew Crew. It's going to be for Mark N. More Walker Jenkins. Brock Wilkin is one of the bigger names for the Brew Crew. And in the hobby, there's Luis Baez for the Strohs. Dylan Cruz, Chrome first for Matthew and the Nats. Lombard Jr. Paper. Yandi Morales. Wilkin, all those Brocks will go to Mark N and the Brewers. There's Elijah Green. Ellie De La Cruz. And a Brock Wilkin, Lava, nice. 258 out of 399. Always nice to find parallels for these uh, key prospects. It's Mark Neshbauer with the Milwaukee Brewers. There you go, Mark. More Walker Jenkins. Kyle Teal for Boston. That's going to be for EA. It's in the game. More Kyle Teal paper. Ooh, we got a cool auto coming up here. That's an insert auto. It's Rookie of the Year favorites autograph. And it's Jason Dominguez, 27 out of 50. Nice on-card auto for the Yankees, Scott Goodman. That's awesome. We have the Yard Goats, Colorado and, and uh, Woo Sox, both under home run drive, White Sox. Got a few games a year in, Sox for once. Same money, nice. Dylan Cruz, aren't the Yard Goats also a, uh, a live golf team? That play I did see last night, Rex. Jung Ho Lee, 
the Korean center fielder for the Giants, slammed into the wall, dislocated his shoulder. Yeah, I saw that. I think they announced that earlier this morning or late last night. How long is he supposed to be out for? That I did not hear. Jacob Burke to 250. And Esmil Valencia. That'll be for Mark and the Astros. Third auto of the box. We'll do a recap, uh, autograph and autograph and other key player recap at the end. Jacob Burke, purple paper for the White Sox. That's going to go to Gary and the uh, the Southsiders. The Knicks have taken the lead. They're up 31-25 now. A couple minutes left in the first. Two boxes down. Six more to go. Solaire got hit on on the head by his own batted ball during BP. You think it just hit the popped it up, hit the netting, and came down back on his head? It reminds me of that old uh, Cleveland Indians team that used to have a, um, had one of their players had a uh, sort of a, a lucky charm for a statue. And this, I remember the, the stories there in, in the news where reporters were like, yeah, he had, this guy had a statue called Joe Boo in his locker and he would put like a little shot of rum there in front as an offering to there. This is back in the back in the eighties. Eighties Cleveland Indian teams and you know one of the one of the pitchers on that team apparently took took the you know the the, the player who's sort of sort of voodoo player, whatever you want to call it, whatever it was like was like it's very bad to drink Joe Boo's rum. Very bad. Now this this Indians pitcher paid no mind to that, and then uh, and apparently took the shot of this rum, and then uh, was walking out into the field, uttered the words, "Hey bartender, Joe Boo needs a refill." But then just then it was during batting practice, bat slipped out of the guy's hand, hit him on hit him on the back of the head. I remember that. It's all over the news. That team went on to have a really great season too. And we got Diego Benitez. For the Braves, that's going to be for Jeremy in Atlanta. And there's a prospect power up, Dylan Cruz. Cam Collier. It turns out that 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 Cleveland Indians team, uh, the owner was trying to create conditions bad enough where um, they that it would trigger a release clause where she the team owner she'd be allowed to sell the team and move it to Florida. This is before the Marlins and. Um, but the team, I don't know. It's just the grit of Clevelanders. You know what I mean? They, uh, nice Justin Crawford, Carl's Carl's son, um, going to the Phillies. 
for Rennie, but, but it was unsuccessful. She tried to move the team there, saying, oh, the, we'll, our, our attendance will be so low that we'll be able to, uh, to sell the team, trigger the release clause, sell the team, move the team to Florida. Didn't work out. Yeah. yeah Pedro Serrano was never the same. It didn't last very long. I think the, uh, it's the straight ball, he hits very well. Curveball. No, no good with the curveball. And then, yeah, I ended up selling insurance at the end. But, man, he could hit it a ton. If he, if he, if he gets a hold of one, he could really hit it a ton. Yeah, Rex, but what about Pedro Serrano? What do you think about his career with the Cleveland Indians? What was the name of that electric closer that they had on that team as well? You know, Ty Pete. There's Carson Wisenhunt to 499. Giants, Larry with the Giants. Remember the, I, I don't know, some of you remember, may, may remember this Cleveland Indians team. Their manager uh, in, the, in, this, just in the previous season was a former manager, but had ended up selling tires at a tire shop in the off season. And you know, the ownership was trying to cut costs and so they weren't able to really get like the next experience. Man, they picked up this old manager who's work in a tire shop. Can you believe that? They hired him. They got to the playoffs. What a story. They got to do a 30 for 30 on that or something like that. There's Aiden Miller. You don't know anything about Pedro Serrano? You got to pay attention to more baseball, Rex. You got to remember the greats. with the Cleveland Indians for a little bit. Hammer. Hammer a fastball. There's Kevin Sim, 50, uh, 59 out of 75. Speak, speaking of the Mexican League, Rex, the, uh, the starting catcher for that Indians team was, <laughs> season before, he was in the Mexican League. You know, just with bum knees, he could call a good game, but, but you know, those, those knees were always a problem for him. His injuries kind of sapped his, his effectiveness behind the plate, but he put it together. Ooh, nice, a Harry Ford. Bowman Prospects autograph. Seattle Mariners, that's gonna be for Chad. Chad K with the Seattle Mariners. Number 25 on that list. Yeah, that Harry Ford is nice. Uh, I have no idea what Yasiel Puig is doing. I think he's, he might be in the Mexican League. I think he's caught up in the, uh, I think he's still caught up in that, uh, that gambling trial that's related to the uh, Otani's translator. I think it's par part of the same federal investigation. We're part of a greater investigation. 
And a George Lombard Jr. Refractor autograph. 77 out of 499. What a box. It's gonna go to Scott and the Yankees. Their late first round pick. Pegged as sixth ranked prospect and best defender in the organization by MLB Pipeline. Nice. There he is right there. End of the first quarter, Knicks up 38-32. There's Aiden Miller. Here's our three autos and another box. That manager they got, that old Cleveland Indians team, that manager they got who he was selling, he was working at a tire shop in the off season. But you gotta credit him. You gotta credit that manager for really changing the culture of, of that team. I mean, he took, he took some really raw talent, like their, uh, like their center, like their speedy center fielder was able to teach him how to hit. You know, get on base, steal bases. There's an old story, I think it was in Sports Illustrated or something like that. There's an old story where he would get a, this, this base stealer would have a, uh, would have a new pair of gloves for every, for every steal that he would make and pin it on his wall, nail it to his wall in his, in his house. And he said something like, I bought a hundred of these or something like that. There, there were there were characters back then, you know. Right, that was the closer's name, Paul. Thank you. I mean, he was electric. Yeah, he had a dry wit in the dugout. I remember a, a Lou Brown story where here's Ryan Lasco. Nice. There you go, Barry. Last spot mojo strikes again. There you go. The second round pick, one of their top prospects in the organization. I remember a story where where Lou Brown, after I think after Vaughn gave up that gave up a big homer, and he was like. Let's see how he handled the situation. He was like a player's coach, you know. He let him, kept him in the game, <laughs> and then the pitcher like plunked the next guy. And it was like interesting, but really emphasized the fundamental. You know what I mean? Oh, there's Yandi Morales. Let's leave all those a little bit later. But spring training de definitely focus on defense. You know. You know, he wanted his infielders just really stepping in front of the ball, charging the ball, getting in front of it, not just kind of ole, you know, stick a glove out. You got to get in position, good footwork, get in front of the ball, bend those knees, get low. Really preach the fundamentals. You know, and the catcher had a lot of leadership too, you know, I think... I think he, he really kept, here's Daniel Susak for Barry to 250. A lot of accountability is what you need in some of these ball clubs too. You know, you gotta make sure your teammates are committed to playing. 
good defense because that, that helps. It's all, all fundamentals at the end. Great team, fun team to watch, even if you're not a fan of, you know, if that could be a division rival, you, gotta, you still have to admit that was a fun team to watch back then. They're doing like American Express commercials and stuff like that. Yeah, that will, well, JC, I was coming up on that. I mean, we've got a lot of break to go, you know, but I guess you just want to dive right into the, to the gossip, huh? Yeah, remember when uh, that story broke? Imagine if Twitter was around back then. But there was, uh, yeah, that closer, bit of a playboy, got around a little bit. Remember he, uh, he slept with one of his teammates' wives. Unknowingly, unknowingly. But yeah. That closer was on parole too, right? I think he was on parole. Or had just gotten out of jail. <laughs> what a wild story. That's right, Hayes was that speedster's name, of course. Yeah, Lou Brown got him, got him figured, it, figured it out, got him to hit, not just pop everything up, put it on the ground, use his legs. I'm a line drive hitter, not a, not a, not a fly ball. There's uh, Josh Rivera at uh, 399, Lava, Cubs, Mark. Yeah, well, you got to admit, I mean, when you first saw that Cleveland Indians team back in the day, you were like, this, this manager working at a tire store, they're getting closers from the California Penal League. They're, they're getting Pedro Serrano. Who, where, where was he? You know, I don't think he was on the minds of anything. You know, you're getting a once great but oft injured catcher from the Mexican League. You got to admit that the scouting... I know hindsight is it's twenty twenty, but the scouting to be able to identify those talent and put that team together for at least that season was pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, not, not enough of these modern players confident enough to lay down a bunt in clutch situations. Here's Max Wagner, 001, first one ever made to 100 for the O's. That's going to be for Jordan and the Orioles. Second round pick, mini diamonds. I have not. I personally have not. I think one of the guys here have pulled, I think we've pulled a couple red out of fives in, any of the, in these Bowman breaks. I personally have not, but I know, I know they exist. We've seen them. Aiden Miller Chrome. Looking for one more autograph in this box. Have anyone pulled uh, any of the blues with the first Bowman inscription? I have not seen any of those. I don't think we've seen that. That's right, Paul. That that's a that's a forgotten bit of the story. Um, Hayes, who ended up stealing a ton of bases that year, maybe close to a hundred bases that year, Hayes actually wasn't even invited to spring training. He just kind of walked on. They tried to kick him out. There's Austin Riley, 290. Yeah, I think 
overnight they they like took his bed in the dorm room style situation that they were in put it outside and then uh, he was just like what the story goes he's like what I've been cut already right and then exactly JC so the legend goes that that they were running sprint drills at that time that kind of woke him up he was outside and like I think in was he wearing shoes JC I think just in bare feet possibly on 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 some slick grass He outran, you know, he out, outran a, a lot of his teammates. I mean, he showed off his raw speed. What, what a story, what a story. Sometimes that's how it works. Just like, that's, that's why baseball is so great. A crew of misfits can just, just get together. Enrique Bradfield Jr., 107 out of 150. Jordan with the Orioles. Nice. Right, Kevin, in PJs nonetheless. He wasn't even dressed. Let alone have, this, have his spikes on, you know? All right. Halfway through the break. We've got about another 30, 40 minutes to go. I know, they carried him sleeping on the... Yeah, they carried him out. I just mentioned that, yeah. Crazy. Oh, Jason pulled a red to five. Capri Ortiz for the Halos. Nice. Yeah, so they're out there somewhere. Bare feet. Wearing silk PJs. JC saying, it's crazy. It just doesn't happen in baseball anymore, you know? Now, now kids are like, there's so much, uh, you know, training that goes into baseball at an early age. Or kids are going to baseball camp. Everything's specialized. You know, they, you know, they got the driveline program. You know, all that sort of stuff. Remember Hayes' uh, uh, American Express commercial, Don't Steal Home Without It? I thought that was pretty good. Ooh. I have not, I've personally not seen a Rising Inferno Super Fracker auto. Mason win, that'd be pretty awesome. Ooh, I'd love to pull that, Brian. I'm okay with that. All right, next box, another box, let's go. It's an Aiden Miller, Prospect Power Up. There can be autos for that too, for the Prospect Power Ups. George Lombard Jr. There's Yamamoto right there. Aiden Miller, Green Lunar, nice. That will go to Rennie and the Phillies. Always good to see parallels of these key prospects. Late first round pick for the fighting, for the fighting Phils. Purple paper. Mookie Betts to 250. Brian H. Hopefully Mookie keeps it up throughout the season. Would love to see that.
Colton Ledbetter to 125. Brock Wilkin prospect power up. Yeah, we'll see what the loss of Trey Turner does for for the Phillies in the long run. Rays, that's going to go to Robert and the Rays. Morales. Rex, I still can't believe you don't remember Major Leaguer Pedro Serrano and this classic Cleveland Indians team. There's Jared Serna, 25 out of 250. Schwarber has a 218 average. LOL, why, why is that LOL? That's what he usually does. I think that's not, that's not surprising. It'd be, that's like, that's like, uh, what do they say in journalism? If a dog bites a man, that's not news. But if a man bites a dog, that's news. So, Schorber having a 218 batting average, I think, is, is not news. He's hitting like 260. He might be winning MVPs. Oh, you're saying that's a great average for him. What is his like lifetime in, or like his average in like the last few years? Average, average. Luke Adams. Milwaukee Brewers, Mark N with the Brew Crew. Chrome. We got, uh, we're looking for one more auto out of here. Ali <laughs> Dela Cruz, Rising Infernos, Walker Jenkins paper, Aiden Miller paper. Twenty six is career average. So two eighteen. It's about about where we where we need him to be. Forty five to get to three hundred. How many homers is he at now? Infernos. No, I've not seen the anime parallel yet. He's got nine for the season. I mean, he could conceivably hit 45 more home runs this season. There he is. I mean, I feel like the weather hasn't even started getting warmer for a lot of uh, for a lot of teams. Nice. There's our third auto, and it's Johan Fran Garcia, 49 out of 50. Bowman first, Gold E A, and the Red Sox on the board with an auto number 25 in the Red Sox organization. Nice. Yeah, one's. I mean, you know. 
when, once the entire country starts get, to get right in the, in the middle of summer, baseballs will start to pop. I think even as of yesterday, there was like a rain out. All right, three boxes to go, almost there. It's amazing how many tornadoes the country has had already. It wouldn't be that shocking, Rex, if you followed uh, the climate news like I do. The, uh, the shift from La, uh, El Nino to La Nina, meteorologists have already said that an uptick in, uh, in tornadoes would be uh, what, we, what we would see. So for once, the weatherman was right. And we've got Colt Emerson to 299. Yeah, actually, there'll be more hurricanes on the East Coast, I think. I think El Nino brought more possibilities of hurricanes on the, in the Pacific. And so that's when that one hurricane last year that almost crept up to Southern California, just the San Diego area. But yeah, we had, we had a couple of those out here. You Andre Vargas. Ellie Dela Cruz. And look at these. Seventy one out of one fifty mini diamond spotlight. These are uh, sharp looking cards here. Who is this? This is Wyatt Langford, Rangers. Evan, with Texas. I think these are now only one per case. Arjun. few things happening here. Behind Colton Kowser is Nazan Zenatello to 399 paper for EA. 
And a Kyle Teal for EA. 51 out of 299. Speckle autograph. The Boston Red Sox, EA Sports, it's in the game. 14th overall pick. Boston's fourth best farmhand in their organization. I feel like this has been a pretty, uh, we'll do the recap and we, we, you can judge for yourself, but I feel, like it, I feel like we've gotten a few autographs on that key list there, key prospect list. I feel like it's always, it's always a good thing. And we got another George Lombard Jr. Yankees. That's going to go to Scott. Late first round pick for the Yankees. Piece of candy, James Wood. Ooh, piece of candy. 118 out of 299. Matthew with the Nats. He might get the call up pretty soon. He might force his way up to the majors. We got Gladiators of the Diamond, Felnine Celestin, and Yoelin Cespedes. 42 out of 150, Blue Shimmer for Boston. That's for EA. And I think these are pretty short printed too. This also might be a one per case or something like that. Chad with the Gladiators of the Diamond for the Mariners. Dylan Cruz. And a Luis Matos is your third autograph of the box. 263 out of 499. Rookie auto for the Giants, Larry, with my rivals. Dodgers are in San Francisco tonight. Don't know who's, I think it's, Gavin Stone might have the start for the Dodgers. And Keaton Wynn? All right, next box. Are the Cubs getting swept by the, by the Braves? Braves are a good team. As a Dodgers fan, I, th I think the Braves might be the the only team 
that I'm a, that I'd be afraid of. Uh, the Blue Jays Orioles game postponed rain. And we haven't even got to the warm part of the season yet. Some of these offensive guys we might see start to start to pop when the weather gets warmer. Some of these ballparks around the country. We haven't even seen what some of these hitters can do with their full potential. Marlins uh, beat the Tigers in extras, one nothing. Jesus Sanchez driving in uh, Brian De La Cruz. And they hang on in the bottom of the 10th to win. Uh, Doubleheader, this is a rain makeup game, I think. Uh, Nationals beat the White Sox 6-3. Philly shut out the Mets 4-0. Aaron Nola with an eight strikeout performance. And then games in progress. Uh, bottom of the third, Astros leading the A's 1-0. Top of the fifth, why, uh, White Sox leading the Nats 3-0. That's not good. I think I started the Nationals pitcher, Mitchell Parker. Three earned runs. Come on, Mitch. All right, anyway, um, Rangers, top of the third. Guardians have jumped out to a 6-1 lead in Texas. Top of the sixth, Brewers are leading the Pirates four to two. In Minnesota, that's a TBS game. The Yankees are leading the Twins five one. In the top of the fifth, Braves are shutting out the Cubs seven nothing. They're two hitting the Cubs. Top of the seventh. In the middle of the eighth, Rays and Red Sox are tied. I think I'm on the Rays this one. Only have a few plays today. Lost the Mets play. I'm on the Rays and on the uh, big dogs, Giants. All right, behind Jordan is Daniel Susak. 67 out of 250. Purple Chrome for Barry and the A's. 19th overall pick. There's Lombard. Brooks Lee. Knicks have taken a 63 to 47 lead with 240 left in the first half. Oh, there's Arjun. Who would have thought that William Charis would be the, the better, is he? I mean, let's see, let's see how William looks after he plays as many games as Wilson. Colson Montgomery to 125 and Tony Blanco Jr. Harrison with the Pirates. And the Colson Montgomery to 125. That Lunar will go to Gary and the White Sox. Are you tired of your hair breaking after waiting years for it to grow? 
Dylan Cruz paper. Yeah, I don't remember if he if William was rated rated a little bit higher than Wilson or not. Dylan Cruz, Chrome. Should be two more autos in that stack. And there's an Ellie Della Cruz, purple. And then there's the autograph. 140 out of 199. Ellie Della Cruz, purple, paisley, paper. Tops just calls it purple pattern, but it looks like purple bandana or purple paisley. Reds, Evan with the red legs. And the auto is Blue Lunar, a little color match, 35 out of 150, to the moon. Jeffrey Rosa going to Donald and the Mets. That's a good line for, for uh, William Contreras. I'm sure he'd be happy to carve out a career like his brother. Yamamoto, Ellie. Catcher's, catcher stats are weird though. It's kind of hard to project because I work such a grueling position. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes like, Oh, for 30. In this next handful of games. Like, watch those numbers when, like I said, when the weather gets hotter. Arjun, Walker Jenkins, should be one more auto, unless we get short an auto, hope not, it can't happen. Nope, there's the auto, it's Kevin, uh, Kelvin Hidalgo, Kelvin Hidalgo. For the Rockies, that's going to go to Inku in Colorado. Oh, Wilson Contreras is, is not even playing? Oh, then you can't really say that he's better than his brother if his brother has been injured and hasn't played this season. All right, last box coming up. All right, end of the first half, 69-54. Knicks lead, trying to take a 3-2 lead in the series. This is a very pivotal game, 2-2. You can vote in our poll if you want to in the, uh, in the YouTube chat. The, the game after this one is gonna be Timberwolves. Nuggets, Tim, the Timberwolves are in Denver. 
The spread is four and a half points between those teams. Nuggets are the favorites. That series is also tied at two apiece, so another pivotal game five. So far, voters are saying 71% are thinking Nuggets are gonna win. Oh, that's right, yeah. I do remember that. But yeah, weather, Rex, is another one of those reasons why I know it seems I'm just arbitrarily harping on it's too early, it's too early. But I mean, one of the reasons why is because weather still, it's cooler weather still has a lot of effects on ball players in the first couple months of the season. When the weather starts warming up, there's a lot of players that really pop, you know, that maybe having slumps, they really pop and they can have a hot June and July. That'll make their numbers look great by the end of the season. Then you start to see separation with pitching staffs too. You know, pitchers right now may be benefiting a little bit from the weather. You know, and then you gotta say, hey, you know, can this, can pitcher so-and-so, can he do it, you know, in a hot, humid night you know, in the middle of, in Atlanta, you know, on a Wednesday night facing, facing that, facing that Braves lineup when the ball's jumping off bats, you know, where, where hits that would maybe die at the warning track on a cooler day, you know, get that extra few feet to go over the wall. I mean, that's where you start seeing, you know, if these, these young starting pitchers, especially if they're, if they're the real deal or not. Another Yamamoto. Need a Matt Shaw, Mark is saying. Oh, he grew up in your area. It's fine. Let's conjure up a Matt Shaw. Yeah, I think too, a lot of, lot of uh, catchers are getting hit in the helmet on their backswings. I think they're creeping up closer to try to, yeah, to try to frame the pitch in a certain way. Try to get that strike. It's happening more more often. We got a John Cruz Lava, 145 out of 399. That's gonna be for the Yanks. It'll be for Scott. And the autograph is for the White Sox. That's Riku Nishida, 109 out of 299. Speckle autograph for Gary and the White Sox. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Catcher interference calls are way up. There you go. Oregon guy. I think uh, catcher Will Smith last season kind of learned his lesson because he got hit in the head a couple times on backswings and some of the, the, look at the way some of these hitters, you know, slash that bat through the zone. You catch the back end of that, the fat end of the bat hitting you on the top of the hel head, even with a helmet. He was in like concussion protocol once or twice in last season. Didn't really, I don't think ever really got going last year. Here's Kyle Teal. He's definitely going this year, but. Never really got things going with the bat last year. There's Aiden Miller. Rob, what's going on? No, I've been seeing a... I'm going to do a recap in a second. I mean, aside from just the standard you know, base cards and inserts, there hasn't been anything significant Junior Caminero-wise. Also, when are the Rays calling him up? And here's Filippo de Turi, 90 out of 150 blue paper. Here's the table, the first 
Yeah, more hitters are, are, are standing in the back of the box. Catchers are creeping up, and I mean, I think it's pretty obvious the results that are happening. Um, yeah, they're, I think they're going to make that rule change. All right, no more pitch framing when Robo Umps arrive. But JC, I have a question for you. The, uh, when the Robo Ump, will the Robo Ump be able to adjust, use, maybe using AI technology? You know, if it's like a 12 0 game in the seventh inning, are, are the, is that Robo Ump going to stretch out the strike zone? Let's get the game going? Or are they, they going to still call a, call a tight zone? in a blowout game. Here's Anthony Huzo. Yeah, the junior Camineros in this set I think are going to be few and far between. The, the, the rookies are very hard to, to hit on. I think he's classified as a rookie in this set because it's mostly about these Bowman firsts. He's from Palmdale. I think that's where... Uh, Paul George is from? Just over the over the mountains in the high desert area as we call it here in Los Angeles area. Yeah, he's a rookie in this set. No, I know, I know that that is a problem because they haven't they haven't gotten that the technology just right. But but I, I am I am kind of serious about the fact that like if it's a blowout game, you know, traditionally the umpires will stretch out the strike zone, kind of move that game along. You know, so if it's like a twelve nothing game in the seventh inning, are we going to get that? Trying to look for some Matt Shaw's for Mark, but I haven't seen too many of him. There's Yamamoto, Ali De La Cruz usually follows him. Does Tampa have any other autos or para? That I don't know off the top of my head. Well, hopefully, you know. They'll be able to uh, use AI technology and tell these robo umps when to, you know, to increase the strike zone a little bit. That's the thing about the umps is that the players don't care necessarily about the letter of the law. They care more about consistency. So I wish, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. Maybe someday it will, but... If we do end up going to a robo ump, could that robo ump, could strike zones kind of shift a little bit just to be consistent? Maybe if a, a pitcher is kind of nailing that inside corner or outside corner if you're right handed better pretty consistently, could you like kind of stretch out the strike zone a little bit? You know, that would be kind of cool to see. You know, but if a, if a pitcher himself is inconsistent, maybe the strike zone tightens up a little. They don't get that favorable sort of outside call. I mean, I'm sure in the early years, if and when we go to robo ums, maybe it won't be that sophisticated, but I'd like to see that kind of happen over time. There's a George Wolko. Twenty seven out of fifty five or Wolkow. You think maybe if he gets gets a little bit bigger, they call him Swolkow? How big is he? Six seven, two thirty nine? It's a big dude. George Swolkow is what we're going to call him. 27 out of 50, gold shimmer. If he packs some more, more LBSs on that frame, Swolkow. Does he project as a power hitter? I want him to be. Wow, he has a 60-yard dash time of 6.65 seconds. Towering slugger with deceptive quickness combines large build with long limbs and admirable athleticism. Deliberate actions and long strides in the field, powerful arm, 
with clean stroke and long finish. Swole cow. I hope so too. We're rooting for Swole cow. That's going to go to Gary and the White Sox. Gary, hang on to that. That if that guy bangs in the, in uh, in the majors, we want we want to. We want to we want to be able to call him slow Swole Cow. What a bomb from Swole Cow! Aiden Miller paper. We're getting towards the end. Those are our three autographs. Any other parallels? Key prospects here. Does not look like it, but nice little finish here, ladies and gentlemen. Man. Right, and, and JC, you'll be the one to say, hey, I remember when Joe, when Joe Jaspi first coined Swole Cow. He's a big dude, Swole Cow. 6'7, 239, that's just listed. It might even be bigger than that now. Here's, here's the recap. I'm gonna snap a picture of that Swole Cow. That spotlight's really cool. Got it. This was a pretty nice break. A lot of color. You know, Lombard Jr. autographs. Harry Ford. Got a lot of the key. That Jason Dominguez was really sharp. Walker Jenkins autograph. A lot of great stuff here in this 8-box jumbo. Pick your team 9. From jaspyscasebreaks.com, I'm Joe. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Swole cow.